Welcome to our fifth Heritage Volunteer Group Volunteer Leader of the Year Awards. Um, if I just go like that every time I need a slide moving, that yeah. will be brilliant like that. Okay. <laughs> so here's my first one. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for the introduction. I'm the Volunteering and Cultural Participation Manager for Leicestershire County Council. Uh, museum and Heritage and Library Service. And I sit on the National Heritage Volunteer Advisory Group and I chair the Regional Heritage Volunteer Group for the East Midlands. I've been um, a volunteer leader in the heritage sector for 25 years. Years and years back, a member of my team who um, Nicola Syke and now Levin was the first ever winner of Volunteer Leader of the Year. And I honestly really believe it paved the way for significant strategic changes and new commitments in favour of cultural volunteering in our department, which I will always be grateful for. And this award is very, very close to my heart because of that. I've also been lucky enough to be welcomed into the um, HBG family ever since. So our focus of this year's conference is how we can make the most of our varied skills to build a new future for heritage volunteering. And after hearing in more detail and reading in more detail about our colleagues who have been nominated, I am confident that you will all agree we hands down have these skills in abundance between us and the future is definitely safer in our hands. All the nominations, without exception, stressed how volunteers within our HVG network and across the sector are faced with new and emerging challenges. Words such as forced change, significant change, review, out of their comfort zone, ran throughout all the nominations. The disruption of the pandemic is still impacting us. Not surprisingly, however, the nominations overwhelmingly highlighted that our volunteer leaders rise to these varied challenges with determination, with passion, with enthusiasm and with resilience. Leading on these awards this year gives me even more reason to be proud of the opportunity of being involved with recognising and rewarding these amazing contributions. Nominations also stress that volunteers have been essential in supporting sites and services to stay open, to remain relevant and remain accessible. The nominations are a reflection of everybody here at this conference today who helped make that happen. So please, alongside those people who have been nominated, be sure to celebrate yourselves and your own achievements. This award celebrates the very essence of excellence in volunteer leadership. It focuses on three key themes, innovation, collaboration and passion. For innovation, we were looking for projects and activities that improve the practice of volunteer engagement, horizon scanning, problem solving, learning from other successes, creating a new idea from within and applying it. For collaboration, it was all about working with others to create outstanding or transformative volunteering experiences. How volunteer leaders define these, how they have built new relationships within and beyond their organization, beyond their sector and manage these and sustain these over time. For passion, it was all about going beyond what could reasonably be expected for somebody leading and managing volunteers, that little bit extra. So there were 12 nominations this year for from small heritage sites with nominees responsible for eight volunteers to independent trust and registered charities and larger national organization with near on a thousand volunteers. So let's celebrate our nominees 
and in doing so, celebrate the extensive network of people and organisations we are a part of and some of the excellence which is happening to build our heritage volunteering future. So in front of you on the screen, you can see Volunteer of the Year nominations for 2022. As I talk, um, I think we're going to move through some images um, of, of the people who have been nominated. So Katie Ellis went from being a volunteer herself at Elizabeth Gaskill's house to volunteer manager and has a deep understanding and appreciation of the volunteer team, quick to spot opportunities and understand challenges. She's been recognised for making a significant difference in areas such as training and development, filling role gaps and welcoming volunteers with learning or physical disabilities. Georgia Sinclair is celebrated for challenging the model of traditional volunteering at the Royal Opera House and helping to diversify the volunteering offer. She's recognised for taking great strides to engage a new type of volunteer, a definite testament to her inclusive and welcoming approach. Katrin Pogorski demonstrated excellence in coordinating over 60 new and remote volunteers with personal experience of access barriers for Access Heritage 22 a new project funded by the National Lottery Heritage Fund and run by a partnership of Vocalize, Stage Text, Centre for Accessible Environments and Autism in Museums. Lainey Biggenden was nominated for Women in Science, the first ever free public tour at the National History, Natural History Museum, where she supported volunteers to battle restrictions and co-develop the programmes. She used the lived experience of being women in STEM and developed an approach which was truly collaborative. Katie Hammond has shown outstanding volunteer leadership by creating a model of best practice for engaging with volunteers at the New Museum of Oxford, MOX. And she's been recognized for giving a voice to volunteers who have previously felt unheard and developing a new volunteer community. Melanie Beasley at Belsay Awakes Project has been nominated for involvement with a programme of crucial conservation work to safeguard Belsay Hall and Castle. Ruth Bean for successfully bringing volunteers together in one, into one team following the merger of Sheffield Museums and Sheffield Industrial Museums Trust. Fantastic work across six different sites. Sam Grief, Cleveland Pools Trust, for welcoming furloughed professionals with specific skills and, to quote, giving some volunteers a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Sean Park at Foxton Canal Museum bravely embraced new volunteers by supporting gypsy and traveller communities to co-curate their own exhibition based on their traditions, cultures and hopes for the future. Sophie Hearn supports over 200 volunteers at multiple sites across English heritage. I quote Sophie is a powerhouse of passion for her job and someone that has such a huge level of joy in everything that she does, which is infectious. And Tracy Jenkins from Art UK supports up to 200 virtual volunteers to record over 14,000 UK public sculptures. Robert Kiel from Brunel Museum successfully channeled unparalleled enthusiasm and knowledge of the Brunel family and history of the Thames Tunnel. As you can see, the standards were high and that's just a snippet of what was in the actual application forms. And I just thought it was really important because we had the opportunity to share those snippets with everybody today. Because the roles and remits are diverse, but each and every application demonstrated innovation, collaboration and passion. And suffice to say, the jobs of shortlisting and judging were really, really tough. So huge thanks to our judging panel. The shortlisters, Nicola Levin, who was 2018 um, winner for 1620s House and Gardens Young People Autism Awareness Project. 
And Danielle, Danny Garcia, the Imperial War Museum, our advisory group member and twice successful nominator um, in different organisations. And a huge thanks to our judges. Esther Liscaru, who was our winner last year for the Manchester International Festival. And Richard, our advisory group and previous vice chair of HVG. And Ashley. Now, Ashley um, is here as the co-founder of Volunteero, who obviously is the sponsor of this year's awards. And before, before we share the winner, I'm delighted to announce that the judges decided to select a highly commended volunteer leader this year. The highly commended is Ruth Bean from Sheffield Museums. Well done, Ruth. Really, 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 really amazing nomination. And it's great to see you here today. I'm so pleased that you're actually here. Hiya, hiya, hiya. <laughs> Um, as the co-founder of Volunteeru and the sponsor of this year's conference, and of course one of the this year's judges, I would now like to invite Ashley Staines to announce our 2022 winner. Thanks, Amanda. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Brill, brill. Um, look, Honestly, the nominations, as Amanda mentioned there, the nominations were amazing. Uh, they made us really, really proud to sponsor this award and this conference um, and really just remind us why we support such an incredible set of professionals as volunteer managers. I mean, look, tell me another profession where you have to wear so many different hats and create amazing impact with so little, often too little funding, too few staff, too little time, right? And I'm sure you can all empathize with that state of affairs. So um, it, it makes me very proud to announce that the winner of the Volunteer Leader of the Year this year is an I hope I get the pronunciation right here, Katrin Pajorski. Um, and uh, what I wanted to say about that is that firstly, uh, a, a huge uh, kind of round of applause virtually here. But um, as judges, we felt that Katrin had achieved amazing outcomes. Um, the nomination made it clear. She's collaborated with the volunteers exceptionally well. Um, she's helped recruit and support over 60 digital volunteers, all of whom have personal experience of access barriers. So Katrin demonstrated her commitment to inclus inclusiveness and accessibility and ensuring that they all had a safe space online. This was evidenced by an independent evaluation which uh, in which 100% of the volunteers said their accessibility needs had been met during the project. This is exceptional uh, as the majority identified as deaf, blind, or visually impaired, as um, disabled or neurodivergent. So the wonderful testimonials from the volunteers demonstrated, demonstrated her success in establishing positive, supportive, and nurturing relationships with them. Um, and it's, it's even more impressive given uh, this was a digital role. Catherine demonstrated both flexibility and creativity in keeping volunteers engaged in the project and went above and beyond to ensure uh, she was readily available when support was needed. So uh, another massive well done to Catherine. Oh, thank you, Ashley. And well done, Catherine. Um, I know you're here today with us. I can see you. And I'm hoping that you would like to say a few words. Thanks so much. Thanks, Amanda and Ashley. That's really kind. Um, yeah, it's it's really nice. <laughs> you know, um, it's a really lovely accolade to receive. Um, thank you so much to the Heritage Volunteering Group and judges as well. Um, hearing about all the nominees is just amazing. The work that um, the volunteer managers do to uphold um, so many organisations across the UK, huge um, venues as well. It's it doesn't go unnoticed um, and I think that volunteers are so crucial to everything that we do um, whether it's charity or um, heritage and museum venues um, we really couldn't do it without them that being said managing volunteers is not an easy job as Ashley said it requires you to wear a huge amount of hats um, but I stick with the the three principles that I talked about in our session um, just now of 
forming positive patient and problem solving relationships with our volunteers. Um, so it's all about listening to their needs um, and just making sure that they feel heard. And that's something that our project really focused on in terms of making sure that all of our volunteers felt uh, welcome, felt like they could express their needs and that they're and feel confident that their needs were met as well. Um, it's been a really uh, challenging project. Um, we had to turn around some really um, big results within six months, um, but we did it and I've still maintained um, very positive relationships with our volunteers, um, all of whom are based across the UK remotely. And as we know, remote volunteering can be very isolating. So we really wanted to focus on bringing our volunteers together um, as best we could. So I'm just, I'm happy that we've achieved that. Um, and just so grateful for all the time and effort that they put in, to be honest, because they were putting in upwards of kind of 50, 60 hours, which is just not a week, sorry, over the months, <laughs> um, but uh, still just fantastic. So um, yeah, we're just really, I'm just really grateful for the nomination and the award. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, huge congratulations, obviously. And um, I don't know how Esther feels. I'm, I'm sure she's very proud to hand over her crown. And I'm really pleased that Esther was one of the judges um, this year. And I know from all previous winners that personally and professionally, there are benefits um, from this award and the accolade can be far reaching. So enjoy. <laughs> um, and this year, we do have prizes sponsored by Volunteer Room. I, I don't think this was widely publicised. Um, so as highly commended, Ruth will receive £25 high street vouchers and our winner, Kate Prim, will receive £100 high street vouchers. <laughs> Um, and um, a one-to-one -one consultation session with volunteering expert, you've all seen him today, HBG executive board member and our panel facilitator, Rob Jackson. So it really will give you the opportunity to indulge in development, which is totally based on your choice, Katrin, you know, not something that the organisation is telling you to focus on, but it's about you. So thank you to everybody who nominated Um you know, it looks like a short form. It takes a lot of, of effort. So thank you. Everyone who promoted the awards and everyone who is here at the conference celebrating excellence in volunteering across our sector today. Catherine, you are a credit and an asset to the sector um, and the profession. Back to the room. Thank you, uh, Amanda, and a huge uh, well done, uh, Catherine. Um, it's an incredible um, project. You've done an amazing uh, job and, and your, your award is hugely, hugely well deserved. So um, congratulations. Um... <laughs>